I'm so very glad that ISTF has asked me to to reflect on my experiences with Tropical Forest Foundation. It's an extraordinary. It was an extraordinary organization. Uh, I learned much, and I hope I contributed much um, during my time with TFF. I was elected to the board um, in 2004 and served for 12 years as a board member. Uh, and my background is that I serve and work overseas over the last 35, 40 years in over 40 countries. Uh, so the goals of Tropical Forest Foundation in my work uh, really meshed quite nicely. I represent Virginia Tech, um, a land-grant university in Virginia. Our land-grant charge is to work in education, research, and outreach or extension. Uh, so uh, that also fit nicely with with the goals of um, of the Tropical Foundation, Tropical Forest Foundation. TFF is a coalition of, or was a coalition of uh, industry, conservation, and scientific leaders working together to achieve sustainable management of tropical timber in the major uh, producing regions uh, of the world, uh, focused in uh, several countries, but primarily in um, Central Africa, Brazil, Guyana, and South America, and Indonesia in Asia. TFF uh, had has been widely recognized as establishing demonstration models and training facilities uh, to show the advantages of and, and teach the principles of uh, sustainable forest management and reduced impact logging. And I'll talk some about reduced impact logging um, a bit later. Again, I, I represent Virginia Tech and <clears throat> this whole uh, involvement that I had really built uh, my experience uh, with training and education, but also outreach. And I'll touch on that and, and um, research in just a few minutes. Um, this, this, the foundation focused on the fact that society needs food and timber and fiber. Uh, we can't avoid that. So how to do that in a sustainable way and then actualize this on the ground through the training facilities and other, other programs. As I said a moment ago, it, um, it was very enlightening to me that an organization like this would, would exist because it was a collaboration between um, government agencies, USAID, the USDA Forest Service, uh, multilateral uh, government agencies such as the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, nonprofits, WWF, Worldwide Fund for Nature, uh, Nature Conservancy, uh, International Wood Products Associations, and several other organizations were members of this. Uh, my colleagues from Yale, North Carolina State University, and University of Florida were some of those folks that joined on a on a uh, uh, on our board or worked with us um, from educational institutions. We had several guests at our board meetings that we would engage uh, both during the meeting and and afterwards, uh, and some of them included a wider range of uh, professional organizations, uh, companies, uh, and several other of the key players. Well, getting back to our original goal of talking about education, research, and outreach, um, I'll, I'll just run through a few, of, I have a few photos here. I also have a few examples of what we've been doing uh, overseas. Again, we worked in Brazil, Guyana, Indonesia, and Africa. Uh, we did outreach there, uh, training equipment operators, training foresters, forest technicians in sustainable forest management, also uh, reduced impact uh, logging. We collaborated with research institutions in several areas. Um, during my tenure on the board, we talked to um, mining researchers because especially in Guyana, uh, there was quite a lot of um, mining and the mining was uh, threatening uh, sustainable forest management. We collaborated with the Nature Conservancy and other organizations on carbon. We were one of the first uh, collaborative organizations to foster 
some carbon research. This is back in uh, the early 2000s. Uh, of course, we worked very closely um, in research on uh, timber conservation. Uh, TFF kept <clears throat> great data on reduced impact logging and its impact on sustainable forest management. Um, and we also did our work with harvesting, the tools of the trade, so to speak. So that was a very, very important thing. On the education side, we, <clears throat> of course, collaborated with, with the universities in general, but also uh, made them aware of what TFF was doing. And that those examples, those case studies, those training uh, curriculum were readily accessible uh, teaching both at the college level, university level, but also in other other levels as well, technical schools and others. Uh, I know personally, I took um, several examples from uh, Tropical Forest Foundation's work into my classrooms and engaged the students. In fact, we had uh, on at least three occasions, we had board members from the Tropical Forest Foundation on campus and they spoke to our classes. So there was quite a quite a bit of linkage, not just in, in um, educational um, content, but also our board was engaged in, in, in that. Some examples that emerged near the very end were some outreach uh, activities beyond just reduced impact logging. It's common in many countries around the world where harvesting is uh, small operations, a lot of hand sawing uh, with chainsaws, uh, not very efficient and uh, usually very wasteful of, of um, uh, timber material. Uh, and so these uh, artisanal woodcutters uh, became the focus of some of our, our research. Yale was a forerunner in, in sustainable forest management, but also incorporating uh, training and assessments of uh, the impact of, of these local wood woodcutters. I was more involved in the socioeconomic side, uh, did a lot of work with uh, community-based um, enterprises, uh, community management of, of forest resources. Um, and so the socioeconomic side of, of sustainable forest management and especially reduced impact logging was very important to us. Another area that um, universities and Virginia Tech in particular were uh, collaborating was um, in helping sustain Tropical Forest Foundation. And one of the efforts that we were instrumental in was doing a strategic plan for uh, TFF. Uh, and we uh, um, employed a faculty member, not myself, but another faculty member to lead us through a strategic planning uh, process. Um, other um, research and outreach areas included legal trade of, of timber, uh, building on uh, reduced impact logging and saying, okay, now we want to make sure that the timber we're cutting, the uh, forest products that we're uh, producing around the world do come from legal uh, sources. Uh, we actually engaged in another um, um, activity. We engaged with um, a Conservation Management Institute here at Virginia Tech to do uh, field work in Central and South America uh, connected to carbon and carbon sequestration. We were doing that. I mentioned earlier mining. Uh, we sent a delegation to Guyana in 2007 to collaborate with the government and the NGOs there to look at the impacts of, of mining. And earlier, I also mentioned that uh, we, we started some work with uh, carbon. Um, we collaborated with the Nature Conservancy and other organizations um, and back in the 2012, 2013, and 2014. So there were an, enormous lessons learned, and I'll, I'll talk about a few of those in, in just just a few moments. But um, th this is sort of a broad paintbrush uh, approach to, to um, what TFF meant to me, but also what it meant to people on the ground. Uh, visits with um, technicians, equipment operators, forestry companies, manufacturers, around the world uh, showed to me that the impacts of TFF are far reaching, but also very meaningful, uh, especially when talking about 
sustainable management of these valuable resources. And the other thing I wanted to reiterate is it, uh, what a, a unique opportunity for me and for other members of, of the board and then our, our colleagues and our stakeholders to benefit from this collaboration where I could work directly with an equipment manufacturer, a window and door manufacturer, an industrial wood products association, wildlife uh, managers, uh, trainers, other universities, all to um, ensure that um, sustainable forest management and, and specifically reduced impact logging um, has, has, is taken, um, taken seriously and, and is spread. Uh, let me move to uh, a few of the slides that I've selected to sort of back all this up. Uh, I didn't want to bore you with, with uh, uh, dozens of slides, but I did pick 10 that I think are indicative of, of what I've just mentioned. If you look across the top of the masthead of the opening slide, you'll see a few of the things that I've talked about. The species diversity, the uh, middle uh, team is a trained team in measuring, uh, preparing for, uh, reduced impact logging. First thing you do is do a good inventory and then you do some very serious uh, mapping. And then um, then you do your planning. And on the right-hand side, you do uh, planning for um, excavation roads and extracting uh, of the timber. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that in uh, just a minute. It all starts with, with harvest and how to avoid uh, <clears throat> the calamity of uncontrolled harvest uh, and, and make sure that benefits from the forest are equitably um, distributed. And part of that, um, the basis for which we worked was uh, training equipment operators to do a good job of, of harvesting uh, and taking care that when they harvest, that the residual forest, the balance is left there for uh, generations to come. Uh, so this is quite a quite an extraordinary um, task, and um, in at least four countries, we were very successful, and those countries served as models for other countries and other programs. Guyana was uh, one that I mentioned earlier. Guyana is a smaller country on the northern coast of South America, and and to the left you see an example of these woodcutters that I was talking about. Earlier, there are really uh, extraordinary, um, hardworking people. But as you can imagine, uh, they're cutting in situ in the forest and they're not really getting uh, the benefit out of um, their labor and their costs, and uh, they're wasting quite a bit of timber. Guyana is a small, narrow country. It's in the news now uh, for other reasons, but it has quite a bit of timber, especially in, in the South. And uh, we were working with the government there to. to um, ensure that reduced impact logging, sustainable forestry were a part of the uh, mandate there. It's part of the training. <clears throat> we engage, engage in people from all, all walks of life to understand um, the use of equipment uh, and how to, how to cut trees and extract the logs from the forest with minimal damage to the residual forest. So here's a group here of trainees um, working with um, learning more about a skitter. And these training regimes uh, were very collaborative and were shared uh, amongst organizations. Our um, RIL training, um, I'm sure it was replicated in, in many other places, but these training centers that we established really were the basis for, for our work in the tropics. Reducing the impact of logging, saving resources, cutting costs, being more efficient. From this, uh, we um, this is Indonesia. Uh, from this, of course, uh, we had a better, uh, <clears throat> better situation for the manufacturers. The logs, the um, lumber were much more useful and there was less waste further down the value chain. And of course, uh, the Tropical Forest Foundation um, certified reduced impact logging and the customers further down the market chain were assured that the logs and lumber came from uh, reduced impact logging sites. We also collaborated with uh, groups like the Forest Stewardship Council to um, incorporate um, 
forest and other types of forest products certification. A word about reduced impact logging. Another opportunity for outreach and education is the photo to the left is a, a forest that has been logged selectively and you see very little impact from the air. The photo to the bottom is was logged using traditional uh, logging techniques, extraction techniques, and you can see the damage and residual um, soil compaction and other, other uh, factors that will um, impact the regrowth of, of this uh, forest plot. So without imp re reduced impact logging, the results uh, can be quite, uh, quite devastating environmentally and otherwise. Our outreach included um, newsletters, small magazines on the left, that focused on our collaboration. And this one here, uh, the executive committee, after doing the strategic plan, uh, the board uh, extended out, and this is a picture in the bottom right hand corner of actually a visit at, uh, of the board at Virginia Tech and touring our wood products lab. So this, uh, this is the vehicle for us to announce, but also uh, broadcast our, our, um, our collaborations. On the, on the right are uh, from Indonesia. These are uh, planning uh, tools for uh, reduced impact heart harvesting of timber. Um, and these were produced locally, um, funding from the outside. And a very important outreach effort was our, our publications and our website. Uh, again, some uh, of the visits to, to campus, uh, the collaboration I was talking about early on uh, manifested itself here as Dean Paul Winnestorfer and Keister Evans, uh, the executive director uh, visiting Virginia Tech. Um, a, a, a note here at Virginia Tech uh, is one of the largest forestry schools and also has a very large wood products uh, and, and forest products uh, program. On the ground, of course, um, <clears throat> the training involved um, learning by doing. Uh, Engaging here's here are four trainees uh, building a uh, bridge part of a bridge structure, but also salt and so the silting and and soil conservation will be uh, taken taken in mind. So this is an important uh, part of our outreach and education is uh, hands-on experiential learning. This is all become very important and, and very um, um, common now, more common in our college education as well. So this training was very important and the impact was great. Uh, what the result is you want a healthy uh, forest. This is a, a uh, not a typical stream, but the tropical forests uh, need to be maintained. And one of the best ways of doing that is ensuring that the harvests are controlled and a sustainable forest mandate is, is, is followed. Well, thank you for your interest, and I hope that um, maybe if you have questions, you might be in touch with me or some of the other folks involved in the symposium. But thank you again for your attention and, and um, for your interest in uh, Trop Tropical Forest Foundation.